Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Men TV. We're here to talk Jude Bellingham, probably for the final time, Errol. Um, Madrid are now in advanced talks with Dortmund. The meeting is apparently scheduled. Rob Dorsett, Sky Sports News senior reporter, has said it's not done yet. And that's the important thing to say. If I know anything about Jude Bellingham and his father who, deal, who does the deals from, there will still be irons in the fires elsewhere. I don't think it's done. It's a pretty significant story, but I wouldn't suggest any deal is done or close to being done. It's not. I think he seems to think it's not quite done yet. People around you, Bellingham, have spoken to a number of Europe's elite clubs, including City, United and Chelsea. Not sure they're elite. Uh, and I'd be surprised if they were willing to give up on the chase at this point. No Sal Liverpool were in the elite yeah, conversation. Yeah, saga, <laughs> man. It's, how's just, it made you feel today? To be honest, I haven't, I haven't been in the thick of it. That's probably that's me being blatantly honest. I've not been in the thick of it. I've seen, I've heard the rumblings. I, I know that I'll. But you've not like... been in the thick of it. You still jumped on a space about oh, it. Oh yeah, I've been in the space about it, but I didn't say nothing. I, I, I was just in the listeners, just chilling. Um, there's obviously there's the, the meltdown, but we always knew it was going to. Do. The one thing about the one red heading for me and the big red flag that I see when it comes to the Jude saga was observe Liverpool fans, observe how we have operated in the transfer. However, you think it's been good business, the acquisitions have been good signings or not. Observe how those signings have been acquired over seasons gone by. I'm thinking of Fabinho after the, the Champions League final loss. Just pulled it out the bag. It was just there. It was done. Thiago wasn't a lot of big rumblings. Everyone was talking about uh, Timo Werner for, for months on end. We ended up getting Jota, um, Luis, Luis Diaz, Gakpo. These signings haven't been dramatised. There hasn't been a saga. There hasn't been a, a huge like series of... Uh, you know, journalists making reports, rumours, the rumour mill. It hasn't been like that. And by and large, I can't really complain because it means that Liverpool are moving effectively. They're getting the job done and they're being in the play that they want and they're not getting fucked in the arse for the price of these players, more importantly. Um, since this Jude has been such a hyped up saga, since everybody has had an opinion on it, since there's been so many pieces about it in the media, the one thing that's blatantly there to everyone to see, we look in this particular instance, we've looked how more like how Man U have operated when they wanted a big marquee signing than how Liverpool have typically operated. And from that standpoint, I truly felt that it's become it's it's more unlikely to happen than than likely to happen. Just because I don't see us moving like that, and I don't see us booking the trend and changing things just for the sake of just for the sake of this one player at 19 years of age that is going to be an astronomical fee. I knew the World Cup was always going to be an impact on the price as well. So from that perspective, mate, I, I've never been firmly in that dude's coming to Liverpool camp. And I'm kind of glad now that we can actually turn our attention away from Jude and start to prioritise what we need to re-strengthen our squad right now. And let's be honest, to call a spade a spade, we need more than one fucking world class world beater in our squad at the minute if it's going to take us back to the levels we want to be playing at. No, you're right, we do need more. But like, I mean, when it's when it the rumoured fee is around 120 million quid, like this is an 150 million quid, thank you. This is an 150 million quid where it's like, it's far too much. Like, surely this was the fee that Liverpool would have estimated that would have been needed to have been spent all along. Like, we haven't signed him. We tried to sign him last year. We put we a bid in for yeah. Tushimani, close to 100 million quid. Yeah. Um, you know, if we were doing that last year, we've had another year, we've had another year of Champions League, uh, we've had another year of Champions League money, and yet that 100 million quid seems to have... Evaporated, disappeared. Yeah. No, it, 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 it does. But I, I think the, the important thing is, when, when you look at it, if we would have got Jude last season, or we wouldn't particularly have had the season that we'd have had, and you then drop Jude in as an addition to this midfield with the outgoings, you probably think, okay, that's enough. But the way that this season's transpired, the fact that there's no Champions League, I don't think there's a Liverpool fan out there right now that can tell you Jude Bellin on his own is going to take us back to where we want to be. And if we are then, if it's a if it's a toss up between, we've got the money, the hundred twenty million is there, that can get you Jude and Jude alone, or you can spend 120 million and you can have your, you know, one of your other first choices and two of a second choice choice players for that same price. Where's the value in the market at the minute? Where, or where's the value to your squad? What are you trying to improve? Are you trying to improve that market? Are you trying to improve, you know, top end revenue because you're going to get more share times? Or are you trying to improve us on the pitch? And when you're weighing that up, for me, especially just the way the season's transpired, the fact that we're, we're now more unlikely to get Champions League, I don't. I, I feel more comfortable and trusting a model that's worked for us in the past 
that allows us to buy the the quality of players that we need, the right price and the volume of players over just going for one market. How do you sign. think it makes Liverpool look? Because... Oh, we look stupid as fuck, bro. I'm not going to lie. I'm not, I can't dress it up. We, we look shit. And I, I've said it for a while, we have backed ourselves into a... Which is even... I feel we've made ourselves our job even harder this summer because we've backed ourselves into a... We've got to do the business now. FSG mainly is obviously the the financiers for any 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 tran any transfers coming in they've put back themselves into a, a tough place because ultimately we know the money was there whether the money's going to be spent on one man or five man we know the money is there now you're a, an opposition director of football or ceo mm -hmm. or whatever it is making the deals you know liverpool have got 120 million quid in Standard. their back pocket that's not liverpool liverpool have never really done that before so are we following the same model as in previous no, years no, no, no. Well, that's what I'm saying. We look more like Man U now. We've opened ourselves up. We've 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 lifted our skirt up, and everybody around Europe's had a good look at what we've got going on underneath there. And, we, we, and it's embarrassing, but it's also very expensive. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's it now. So I don't know. We can make jokes about it. People say like, you shouldn't be making jokes about fucking shambles and all that. And people are getting really like emotionally invested in it, bro. I don't pay our wages. I it doesn't it. Do I'm still going to sleep tonight at the end of the day. I'm a pissed off. I'm a disappointed in Liverpool Football Club. Yeah, because we are meant to be a well-run sporting institution. And at the moment, we're looking amateurish. And we haven't done that. Maybe that's the, the loss of when you lose figureheads of fact, like directors of football and, and people in those positions. Maybe that's what you're susceptible and you leave yourself open to. But you think that there are still enough people with the business acumen to be able to still make important business decisions that are going to strengthen and better the club rather than be a hindrance to us. At the end of the day, mate, I, I genuinely feel like they've backed themselves into a corner now and there will be outcries and there will be a lot of disgruntled fans and there will be more protests, there will be no more noise, there will be more rumblings online if we do not act as a serious club this summer and get our business done. And when I say get our business done, we can't have a summer saga. We need to be move quick in the market. We need to identify the targets that we now want. We need to get, not necessarily put statements out there and, and feed the, the PR machines, but we need to just go and get the job done. As soon as that market, that window opens, by the end of the first week or two weeks, boom, we've already got one in the bag and we're getting the wheels in motion because anything else, the longer it goes on with the uncertainty, not only do the other clubs and the Sharks around start to increase their price tags because they don't want to lose players too close to pre-season and all the rest of that drama, we then also add the added pressure of fans' expectation now because we're desperate to make a sign. And I don't want three half of mellows, mate. I don't want three half of mellows. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree with you. I think there's, there's questions to be asked of the ownership here, isn't there? Because Well, that's what I was going to ask you. We're, 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 what's well, your thoughts the on The ownership it? for me... Like, the, the model of sell to buy, and I've said this previously and stuff, right? The model of sell to buy is predicated on you've got to fucking sell. 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 And if you don't sell, then you, you can't, can't buy. buy. So something's gone wrong in terms of what Liverpool have been doing because I know we sell Sadio Mane, but massively undervalued at yep. the time. Now, you can look back at it and go, well, actually, he probably wasn't undervalued with hindsight, but at the time, he was massively undervalued. You can look back on, you know, the like... the, the, the Genie fact go that for free. Genie went for a free. Yep. Naby Keita's going. Oxlade-Chamberlain's going. And, and all that type of stuff. There's been a few players. There's been loads. Yeah, and you've yeah. got to, like, what, what initially catapulted us into this era of success was selling Felipe Coutinho yeah. I'm using and reinvesting that money into Virgil van Dijk and Alisson Becker that was essentially the sell to buy model yeah. now it would have been horrible to see Liverpool sell Mo Salah a year ago mm. for 150 million quid but if you reinvest that money and you do it wisely then you can come out of this with a midfield this season and an attack maybe for next season In the, you know maybe you bring the Gakpo signing forward who knows I'm not saying Liverpool should have done that but ultimately you, you'd have to you build a squad over a series of years yeah. and this feels like Liverpool squad has ended and a new one is kind of beginning because the whole midfield kind of needs work We're, and, I, and, I, and I agree with that as well well, to be fair, and the one or the interesting point for me, or the, the the interesting phase we're about to enter with FSG money and else is once the the new expansion is done, they've built the house now. Everything has been built. The training ground's been built. They've expanded the stadium to the kind of the size that you could realistically expect without having to move or make mad crazy alterations to the the general area of Anfield as well. Um, and the only thing that there is left to do any real investments in is going to be that sustainable playing squad investments over the next five to ten years and it will be interesting because they've had these projects not necessarily to hide behind but they've always been able to kind of 
take your attention from what's going on over here and be able to redirect it and say, but look at this or what we're doing. And there's been justification now. Different people will want different things from their club's owners. But when you look at it holistically, you think, all right, well, because we've been successful, I understand why you're trying to build all these other add-on bolt-ons as an institution, as a football club, as opposed to just a playing squad. But you've done all that now. So the only place left to really invest huge chunks of money season in, season out is going to be the playing squad. I don't personally have the confidence to believe that they are going to sustain that for me, whether it is on a buy-to-sell model or whether it is them just going to be pumping the money into the first team and hope that the success then comes and they're going to recoup from the winnings. I, I, I just, I'm one of them. Fool me once, sh 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 you know, shame on you, but fool me twice, it's shame on me. I'm a fucking idiot if I think that that's going to be a likely outcome. Um, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll let you pick up. Listen, I, for me, it's, it's, it's about, it's about there's pizza coming in now. Like, it was KFC last week, and it's pizza this week. Jesus. I've finished right. my training. I'm not dieting now. Let me eat. Okay, mate. Um, for, so, for me, look, Jude Bellingham stuff, right? I totally understand why Liverpool have kind of moved the decision-making from Jude Bellingham is our number one target, so we need to reinvest, because ultimately, you kind of mentioned this before, like Liverpool got 120 million quid, I think it was, last season from Champions League. You know, there's a potential for maybe, I don't know, 60, 70, 80 million this season from the Champions League. Mm -hmm. Next season, it doesn't look like who they're going to be in the Champions League. Now, if you win the Europa League, let me just see if I can pull some figures up because I did well, this. The Europa League was it like 60 or 70? 38 million. 38 million. Frank yeah. Fair got, I think, I'm just going to pull, pull those figures up now, right? Because I think it was along those. We'd still get more than them, though. No, we'd still pull out more than well, them. Well, it's not necessarily the case, to be honest with you. But so let me, let me give you some figures, right? Board. Let me give you some figures here. And you can't get this up, Tom. It's, it's it's on a different program, um, but two billion, two point seven billion is distributed from UEFA to clubs across different competitions. Mm -hmm. Two billion of that two point seven goes, goes to the to Champions, Champions League. League. Four hundred and sixty five million goes to the Europa League. Two hundred thirty five million goes to the Conference. This is for the season twenty one twenty two, right? Um, so the winner of the Champions League. Uh, Real Madrid in 21-22 got, let me just see where this is now, they got 134 million quid. Real, uh, Liverpool got 120 million, Bayern got 110 million. Uh, in terms of the Europa League, uh, Frank Fair got 38 million for winning it. West Ham got 32 million quid. So wow. like we're, we're looking at potentially an 80 million pound drop off, drop -off. Yeah, yeah, from yeah. going Champions League finalists to could be Europa League winners, even if you do, do that. Like, yeah, yeah, but there's yeah. 80 million quid that just disappeared that they will probably have been banking on yeah. going into next season, their financial planning and all that type of stuff. But this is the problem, Errol. It's not about now. It's about what went before for me. Yeah. And that's the major concern because obviously see Michael Edwards goes and you bring in Julian Ward and then Julian Ward hands his notice in and then Ian Graham goes um, like luckily we've got Will Spearman there who's going to be stepping up into people sleeping at the wheel really yeah, yeah but that's the thing like this was a this was the probably the best ran football club in European football off the pitch and what happened is I think Liverpool went to a bit kind of not knowing what was going on, too much uncertainty. And that uncertainty for me, and I've always said this and I've always believed this, is that when you ran well off the pitch, you do well on, on the, the pitch. pitch yeah. When you're not ran well off the pitch, you start to get a little bit shaky off the pitch. Now, the, us having problems in certain areas off the pitch, I think has led to... Um, Maybe a little bit of overconfidence in the midfield, but you can understand that you went yeah. to a, you know, you nearly went to a quadruple last season and stuff. So it's a difficult situation. And I understand that, that you say that, but they're fucking supposed to be able to deal with these difficult situations. And they're supposed to forecast for these ineligibilities. They're meant to have contingency plans. Let's be honest. Like you, you, Paul, run a business here. You know what he's doing. You know how you want to expand or grow and scale if things are going well and everyone's, you know, he's a hitting targets and there's growth. And you forecast and you plan for in the inevitability that Liverpool are, are not going to be great and nobody wants to watch Liverpool football content anymore. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's got to be the balancing act of the two. And I think it's the thing that, and I think it's like with probably a lot of businesses, mate, getting there, getting that success takes a very long time. How quick has it unraveled? Oh, and, it's mad. That, and that's the, that's the shocker for me. In, in, it could but they have to be right, and this is the problem where the trust kind of been eroded a little bit in that, like, they've not been getting every decision right. I think the Diaz sounds brilliant, I think the Gakpo sounds brilliant, but leaving that midfield with no sort of hope in hell almost going into this season, that's where the trust has been eroded a little touch for me. Oh, so then what, what do what do F... So the, the trust has, has been eroded, 
if you had to put a percentage on it, you had you had full faith that we was a well run club and a hundred percent sometimes obviously take other elements away from it. How what kind of percentage has been eroded this season because of that misstep or the, the, that failing to address the midfield for you? Well, I'll take it back, right? How many times FSG have probably made one, two, and Jürgen Klopp have probably made two brilliant, I think, absolute stonewall, nailed on, absolutely amazing midfield signings. Yeah. And that is Genie. Fabinho and Genie. Yeah, standard. That's a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, like Thiago, brilliant footballer, absolutely love him to bits, yeah. but like didn't quite fit for what we were doing at the time, didn't quite work in terms of the injuries and stuff, whereas you've had your Oxley Chamberlain, you've had your Naby Caters, which clearly haven't worked out. James Milner, I need to include in that successful yeah, yeah, yeah. one, by the way, as well. He was a so, free acquisition so like, to that, that, yeah, that, that yeah. kind so of what are, we, what are we doing? Like, are we going to go out and get the right names? Because if you that's get, what if, I was going to ask if, you then. if we get names that we're linked with, I'm Sam with them. Yeah, yeah, if we yeah. get McAllister, I am Sam with that. Okay. But like, are we going to get McAllister? Well, that. Do you well, think we're in Brighton him? now? No. <laughs> Liverpool got 120 mil there, so I, you know, McAllister that was going to go for 40 mil at the end of the season to the the, the best suitor. Well, now I know Liverpool's just, and this is what man you have been caught in this trap of season after season after season. When they flirted so heavily with players and made the public knowledge that they want these players, and then the club turned around and said, Well, we're not going to sell. And then they go, All right, well, you yous aren't going to sell, so we'll pivot. As soon as they pivot, the next club wanted to say, Right, well, there's the price. You see the price on the door. Don't don't come knocking until you're ready to pay the price on the door. And Liverpool are going to be stung with that this season. That's 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 the one I was saying to you before about leaving themselves in that. They've backed themselves into a corner now where there's going to be a 10, 20, 30% increase on the players that we was going to then buy, which means you're going to end up potentially having to cough up more. But you've got to cough up now because you co we can't. It's negligent. It's gross negligent if we go into next season and we don't reinvest in that area. How do FSG go back to securing the trust for for not just fans like you and me, but for the wider fan base? Because what this is going to cause now is fractions between the fan base because we are at a fork in the road and FSG are going to have to make a very conscious decision about how they recalibrate the expectations of the, the Liverpool fan base as a whole and we aren't we can't speak for every fucking Liverpool fan and we wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to fuck it but for yourself personally how do they go about regaining that trust they need to go in well, on their July 1st Liverpool need three names through the door for me <laughs> right <laughs> Facts. Nah, you, you, you spit, no, you spit. That's, what it, that's what it needs to be. We need to get two centre midfielders in and probably a centre half as well. And here's the thing that makes it difficult for me, right, is that we've seen this move to this new formation and I looked at the board like the team was still up, it's not up. But we all know about it. Trent Alexander-Arnold moving into the midfield. Does that formation shoot Andy Robertson or do you need a centre half that can play left back there? Mm. Not sure. I like to give that Robertson the, the, the trust and the benefit yeah, of the yeah, doubt. Yeah. Absolutely, that he's going to be able to adjust to that position. Um. But you see Man City and you see Arsenal doing the same sort of things and they've kind of got three centre-backs at the back, the exception being Kyle Walker at times, but even him, he's not been there at the moment because uh, I think John Stones is doing a better really job good. of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, so, it, now, this, where we're sort of going with this point is, this change, six weeks before the end of the season, that might change every player that you're looking at. Right, now the links obviously, of course, with the McAllisters and the Mason Mounts and all these types of things and you got, they all the make sense for this formation. Yeah. But how long has this formation been in the works for? Because how long have you scouted these fellas for? When you were playing the 4-3-3 formation, you knew you had a left and a right and a blah, 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 and an eight and two sixes. You kind of knew for the last five years what profile of player you're asking for. Gives you a lot of time to work on the scouting side of things. A change six to eight weeks before the end of the season going into one of the biggest summers when it might not even be a formation that Jürgen's decided on for next season because he's going to play it out like until the end of the season. Forced, what the hands, hell? Yeah. How yeah. does that change the transfer strategy? That's a difficult thing. You've got to be on the money and you've got no time to do it. And then you want them in on the 1st of July. <laughs> on top of all that, because I don't want three half mellows. I, I, I would, I'd, even I'd lose my shit at that point. I consider myself quite patient, but I would lose my shit if we were still scrambling around trying to sort deals coming into that first week of fucking August or whatever it is, the week before the, tran the, the deadline transfer day. I, I hear what you're saying. The thing for me is they're, they're going to have to make bold decisions, mate, and they're going to have to stand by the convictions because they are going to be, they are, they're going to be hung out to dry if they, if they, if they, if they're indecisive and if they fumble the bag, I don't think we've got any more fumbles in the bag for us, to be honest with you, especially in that midfield area. We, we, 
It's too tight. Not with Newcastle coming up there with money and what they might do in the transfer window. We're playing on borrowed time, mate. Yeah, we, mate, we could be in, in, in a position now where we're fighting Newcastle for signings. Yeah. Because if they get Champions League, which is looking likely, and Manchester United get Champions League, which is looking yeah, likely think, as yeah, well. Yeah. Like Manchester United with Champions League football is a behemoth of a football club and it's a draw. Yeah. Now, however much we hate them, oh, like, yeah, it's it a big ass draw. And they've, and, and they've got the allure of a new project that seemingly is on schedule. So I won't say good things or better. Yeah, already. To, to Manchester City, a revitalised Arsenal, a money bags Newcastle, and Manchester United. And the beauty, even the, the against How do you then close that gap? Well, Jude Bellingham might have been is, a way of closing that gap. Well, no, you see, this is, my, this is my argument. I don't think Jude is the way to close that particular gap because for me, we should have, if we was going to get Jude this summer, we should have got the other midfielder last summer. Yes. So then Jude then propels you above the gap. Because there's been that drop off now, Jude doesn't help us close that gap. Not only in Newcastle, Newcastle have got the money, but they they because they're ahead of their project, they're not in under any pressure. If shit starts going wrong, boom, 100 mil, 200 mil, 300 mil. But while it's going right, let's be clever. Let's pick a little 50 mil prospect there. Let's pick a little 70 mil over there. And they'll do it right because they, they're not under pressure, the same pressure constraints. Liverpool, they've got time afforded. We ain't, we're on borrow time. So, from our perspective, because of where we've been in recent years, we ain't trying to close the gap. We're trying to make a gap on these teams now. And because the drop-off's been that significant, I always felt one player, especially of his age, whether the profile in terms of his ability was right, I didn't think all that pressure was deserving to be on on Jude Bellingham. I didn't think it was it was worthy for, for it to, to be all on his shoulders. But whatever players that need to come in now, they're going to have to have some serious balls on them to genuinely think we can take this Liverpool team to a new to a new level because we've seen we've we've witnessed we've seen and we've experienced the level that we've been at when we've been fantastic but not only do we have to now be fantastic again I want to see us take the pull a lead pull away because yeah. we didn't do that we didn't really get the juice out of the tank where we you know it's unfortunate what happened to Van Dijk and the injury we didn't get that juice to actually start to pull away from the teams around us to give us a bit of a breathing space. And some t- do you get breathing space at top-end elite football or elite sport? Probably not. You're always going to have the guy waiting to clip away. Like, look at uh, yeah, City this season. We dropped off. Arsenal have jumped straight back into our shoes and been like, well, we're going to clip at your heels and we're going to push it to the middle of May before you can be signed on a, 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 as Premier League winners. So there's always going to be somebody waiting to take your spot. Liverpool need to be that team again so the question is and I'll answer for myself while you think of your answer I think I already know the answer anyway to be honest with you but for me uh, the question is the Liverpool sign three players or the Liverpool should Liverpool have tried to sign just one player and that one player being Jude Bellingham I think the answer unfortunately is blindingly obvious and staring us all in the face and I think Liverpool need to sign three players and that is because of the drop off that we've had this season I think a centre half two centre midfielders is exactly what Liverpool needs now it frustrates me because after two years of you know bearing all to Jude Bellingham and his advisors and buddying up to him on England duties it's and embarrassing. everything else. That in itself it, is embarrassing, it, 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 it is. Like, we've gone hard and you've not got the girl. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, you look silly. Yeah, it looks so silly. But ultimately, the, the, the team has to come first and the team needs more than Jude Bellingham right now, doesn't yeah. it? And I think that's probably where you're at. 100% mate 100% and, and that, that, that analogy is so true we've been we've been waxing lyrical to this girl we've been telling her the most lines about how how fancy the house is when she comes back and ooh, look at feel the sheets that I've got the silk and the, all the rest of it like you remember your courting days you know the lines you used to throw out there way back no I do not mate. <laughs> I was like the most unsexy unable at chatting up girls that you've ever seen there was literally a thing between me and my mates that was like Paige Jack repels women like that's what they basically said all the time well, and now you were right now you were Liverpool, right you've done it yeah it's true like you know what I mean buy to sell the model that, that I took in the end, in the end you know what yeah. I mean I had to take it to Revita on the first date never been back to theatre since <laughs> fuck that shit but one the- time only deal that girl you got the money in my pocket for that shit but that's the little, that's little situation Liverpool have found themselves in so you know, I I I appreciate that it's going to be a tough season, but I, I can't feel too sorry for for the people working in Liverpool Football Club right now because they they put themselves in that position. So you've dug your old lads, fucking get us out of it now because I want us to compete again next season. I want us to be 
can forget how serious he's considered yourselves at the top. I want us to be serious on the pitch next season, and we're only going to be serious if we've got an engine room that was as good as the one. And I want to bet, mate. I want to see us have some classy midfielders. Yeah. Now I've I've seen the industrious Liverpool and the, the, you know the, the 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 battle is not wrong with it. But if we're going to change our style and we're going to change the system. Nothing wrong with changing the profile either as long as we get the right person for that profile. Okay, so we want three midfielders. I'd love one of them to be Jude Bellingham, but it doesn't look, unfortunately, like it's going to happen. So, happen, everyone. Hope you enjoyed that show. If you want to get discounts off redmenmerch.com, if you head over to redmenplus.com and become a club legend, you get 20% off the products over on redmenmerch.com. So, yeah, get yourself some Boss Liverpool gear. Get yourself even more Boss Liverpool content. Become a Redmen Plus club legend today.